Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Uh. In Thornton the Dale, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 and ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's fine. Though. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. sale this week. The VW Caravan there. So do you have to have like, one of them potty cars is in here? Like a potty? Super condition. The best one we've ever had. Fantastic. Absolutely lovely. A Reliant Scimitar GTC. Gran Turismo convertible. She's just lovely. I think they're great. They're going to be rocketing in price. Austin 16. A lot of upgrades, which is a bit unusual. People expect it to be stirred, and it isn't. It goes like stink. At Matthewson's, another auction is just around the corner. It's like a military operation today. Yeah, I know. And the workload has stepped up a gear. Deadlines to me, and we're miles away, as usual. What time were you here this morning, Derry? I know, I was late, but you wait tomorrow. I'll be in at 4 o'clock. We're always here first. Would you like to sell always. that in a higher pitched voice? <laughs> <laughs> it's the busiest month on record. Even Bubbles, head of cleaning and polishing, is overwhelmed. Too much stock, if, if some of us are real honest, with 280 some cars or vehicles. Um, I think there's about 60-odd motorcycles. Derek has said yes too many times. And now there's no room left. It's one of them problems that you can't dwell on, and I don't believe that at all. You, you've become very much like me over the last couple of years. They're learning, definitely learning. There's always somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Bend over, Derek. <laughs> At times like this, only the cream of the crop can be accepted. This morning, Derek has sent Paul out for what he considers is an emerging classic. A Reliant Scimitar GTC. Uh-huh. How about that, then, eh? So that with a great deal of excitement. Well, you don't see too many of them, and I like them. I had one myself a little while ago. I think they're all right. Good buy, good value for money. I just like the style of them. And when you get a really well sorted one, they are really nice to drive. They drive beautifully. It's the week prior to an auction and we're chock a block and I'm being sent to Leicester. You know, unless it's something really special, I don't want to be going for it this week. It sounds a nice car. It gives me the impression that he's uh, an enthusiast and a capable enthusiast. He seems to know his cars. Booked in for collection. A rare Reliant Scimitar convertible from 1983. Here's the old girl purr. Owner Philip Robinson's love for classics knows no bounds. It's in your blood. It's, it's like you've got petrol in your veins. You can't get rid of it. Two point eight litre Ford V6, four speed manual gearbox with overdrive on third and fourth. Gran Turismo convertible. 
She's just lovely. Beautiful to drive. Even Paul's had time to reflect on their qualities. The concept of them's good, isn't it? Let's be fair. V6, um, Ford, Ford running gear. Uh, not a lot to go wrong. You know, they've got all the, the correct components uh, to be a real good user-friendly car, aren't they? You know, fiberglass body obviously doesn't rot, does it? But what Paul doesn't know is that Philip has had a change of heart, prompted by his plans to move abroad. What I'm hoping to do is to sell here, get a, a long ferry to Bilbao, and then drive all the way down through Valencia and then down the coast road to Mojaca, and then hopefully find a nice place to live. And possibly even a nice Spanish senorita. Wouldn't it be nice going through Spain, roof down, sun shining? The desirable GTC that Derek was keen to auction is now not for sale. I've had such a ribbing off my friends, saying, no, you mustn't, you mustn't let it go. Once it's gone, you'll never get it back. Think of the hours of work that you've put in, the money you've spent, and they're right. So this one's staying. This Series 6 Scimitar GTE is now the one on offer, along with a bog-standard Jeep. Paul is not going to be happy. We have ignition. It sounds quite good. Two grand. Two, two, two fifty would not be unreasonable. This scimitar, with its poor bodywork and interior, needs a fair amount of work. It'll be a patient buyer who's prepared to wait for it to break even. Had a whiz round a circuit and um, had a misfire, so I thought, well, we'll call a mis misfire 1984. Over the years, Tamworth-based Reliant, the Robin maker, made some fine fiberglass cars. The Scimitar was originally a coupe, then a sports estate, shooting brake, and finally a cabriolet. Its clever design, from the same team that came up with the Bond bug and the Rally chopper, had instant appeal, but it was quite pricey. With Ford's Essex V6 and enough room for your Labradors and guns, it appealed to Princess Anne. Her mum bought her one for her 20th birthday. She went on to own eight more. The later model had marina door handles and Wolf Race slot mags, good kit. And the convertible, a final throw of the dice for a car that still looks good, but was eventually overtaken by the opposition. Paul's arrived after a long, wet journey. Come round this way, Paul. Oh, he's here. Now then, how are you? Come in, come in. Nice to meet you. He still thinks he's collecting the gold one. What are you replacing it with then? Or are you not bothering? Well, I'm letting the, the white one go, the estate, the GTE. Right. But I'm keeping the convertible. I wasn't going to do that. I see. So a slight change of plan. Yeah, yeah. Good girl. That was good. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that, that, that one that I came for. <laughs> oh, God, it could only happen to me, couldn't it? Oh, God. Entices all the way down was that here. the one that you expect? Yes. Good and that's one. the one that was almost worth coming for. Almost. These two are not worth coming for, and I'm going to blow my gasket with father when I see him. That's it. Unfortunately, the discussions that followed in the boardroom were for family only. But Derek has now come out to make a prepared statement. The guy changed his mind and sent back a GTE. Not only did he send back a GTE, he sent back a very, very tatty, overpriced GTE that we're going to find very, very difficult to shift. Um, so it turned out to be a complete waste of time. But that's, um, dare I say it, maybe typical scimitar owners. <laughs> they can't make their mind up whether they'll wash the car, let alone part with it or not.
After a stressful time collecting vehicles, Paul has decided to join Sarah for a spot of light car reviewing. Does this turn into a bed? Heading for the auction, four classic Volkswagen campers, rooted in an era when people were turning on, tuning in and dropping out. First up, a converted day van from 1979. I like this. I like this different. one. Yeah, it's a bit I really like it. bit before in here, though, isn't it? No. In it? No, I like it. Yeah. yeah, although I do like to be able to see out, but no, I think this is great. I really, it's I... the skylight in it, doesn't it? I don't know, really. Oh, it does. Do you think? Yeah, let the heat out, let the steam out. Well, you can open that back window, can't you? It wouldn't be very private then, though, would it? Well, just park somewhere where it's a bit quieter. Yeah. It's on the V5 as a delivery van, isn't it, there? Yeah, no, it is a, a, an official van. Uh, but uh, somebody's obviously put the rock and roll bed in. So, yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't have a weekend away in it, is there? Oh, easy peasy. Yeah. I do like somewhere to plug my air dryer, though. That's, That's the, the snag in yeah. it. It's the second yeah. Jenny. It's the second Jenny. Or a big hat. <laughs> or a big hat. A big hat. <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to frighten the person you've just woken up next to, do you? Oh, yeah, I do like camping, though. And it's... I'm nearly six foot, look, and you're all right there, look. Straight in, look. Straight in. Look at that. The VW van was born when Dutchman Ben Pon saw the potential of a Beetle with extra seats and load-carrying capabilities. The motorised caravan followed soon. The microbus, combi, splitty, hippie, different names for a worldwide hit. The T1 split screen became a worldwide bestseller. The 23 window Samba at the top end of the range. The T2 bay window took over from 67. With a larger, more reliable engine and a setup that lent itself to rooftop conversions, it offered affordable freedom for practical campers. 44 years of production for a van with a massive personality, a van with a happy attitude that spoke peace and love to generations. And in the eyes of its global fan base, it still does. Next in line for assessment, a Devon conversion from 1972 and a caravanette from 73. Both have fewer than 30,000 miles on the clock. Out of these two, if I was going to have one of these, it would be the mustard, because I'm partial to a bit of mustard. So have these got the elevating roof in them then? Yeah. yeah. There's still no room in it. I prefer the van. I prefer the van. Smells a bit foisty, this one. <laughs> it's been well used. Oh, this one's got a bench seat, though. Look, for the family, look. It's a family ah, model, you see. It is, yeah. Is that the awning in the bag? Yeah. Get loads of you in there, couldn't you? It's a minibus. Yeah. Minibus through the week. You've got a lot of weekend. faffing though, haven't you, to get it all oh. sorted up, ready for the night to... Oof. I don't know Imagine if I'd trying want... to get dressed in there. Oh. You no know. good for me, is it? No. No. No, you're... Sadly, no. No, you're too tall, aren't you? Yeah. Lastly, a T25 camper. A relative newcomer from 1989. This is my favourite one. Oh, no, this yeah. is what you... Ah, now you're talking. Yeah, this is my favourite. Oh, yeah, this it's, is comfy. This it's one. roomy. You oh, can stand yeah, up in it. It's a good van, this. That's a refrigerator. And it's got a fridge to keep your gin cool. Plush, isn't it? Best yeah. carpet on the ceiling. Best carpet look. on the ceiling. And, oh, I'll be able to plug the air dryer in this There one. you go, you see. It's a winner, isn't it? This is the one. It's quite smart. We'll have a cooker in there for you, hasn't it? Excuse me, right. <laughs> Let's get one thing straight. I'm on holiday. I ain't doing the cooking. You Why would cooking? you presume the cooker's for me? Because I burn everything. <laughs> I can only do beans on toast and I burn that. I just uh, cooked some eggs the other night. That didn't end well. When you're an Aldi, you don't cook. <laughs> so that cooker might as well come out and we'll get an extra TV in there. Yeah. <laughs> you never know, there might be a flat screen up there, look. Oh, should we have a look? If there is, do you? I doubt it. I'd be ri Oh. Look, there's oh, room no, for one, there though. Is, there is room for one, isn't there? Look at that. Yeah. So do you have to have like, one of them potty cars is in here? Like a potty? Now you just jump behind the bush, don't you? Ooh, not into all that. I can't see a jacuzzi back here, girl. That's we what could you get one at. in there, couldn't we? Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, I like this. Steering Ooh, wheel's steering. massive, isn't it? Look at that size. That <laughs> steering wheel. Feel like you're in a Winnebago. This fully loaded T25, with all the comforts of home, will have a reserve of around £7,000. The others could go for as much as 14000 Can I just say, love you. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> It's the day of the auction. Thornton the Dale busy with visitors from far and wide. One oh, nine. Aye. Here to peruse and buy some of the country's most desirable classics. An Austin Healy Sprite, 1958 Frog Eye. It's a real classic of the British motor industry, isn't it? Real collector's item. Cars from every era, along with bikes, powered or otherwise. Beautiful. We've already got a Triumph, so, yeah, I just gave him permission to get another one if he wanted. <laughs> With nearly 300 vehicles to get through... 18,000 provisionally down the middle. Derek is earning his money. 2,100 trailer and machine. <laughs> it's a little bit crackers out there today. We knew it was going to be busy, but, hey, it's really busy. Perplexing auto memorabilia. Finding new homes. I got some Carto and Mini pictures. I'll just put them up on the bedroom wall. I was on a few weeks ago for the Harris Derby. And now, what have you bought today? That's just these Mr. and Mrs. Trips, trips the... just ornaments. Have you still got the Harris Derby? We are. <laughs> Also on sale today, the Scimitar GTE that Paul didn't want to collect. It's getting a surprisingly good reception. They make a nice car. I've always liked the three litre, aren't they? I think the best car reliant I've ever made, anyway. Probably want a lot of money spending on it, but it's a beautiful car when it's finished. I think anybody who invests in a classic car or an older car, it isn't about necessarily wanting pound shillings and pence. This is about wanting to keep something to make sure that they don't disappear, disappear from the road. 1984 Scimitar, it's MOT till May 2020. I know it looks a little untidy, but I love them. I think they're great. They're going to be rocketing in price. Get one now, bought now while you can. It, uh, anyway, there you are. Start me on it. Where's it going to be? Where? 500, 5, 6, 7, 800, 800, V, 800. 800 in the seats. 800 pound and going. 800 pound. Are you done? 900. 900 pound. Last time, 900. 1,000 pound. Back in, 1,000 pound. Worth it, you know. 1,000 pound. They're going to be expensive soon. 1,000 pound. Derek's deed is done. <laughs> and new owner, Ray Lynn, delighted with his appreciating asset. It's good underneath there. It's got a galvanised chassis. And, of course, the floor is fibreglass, so it won't rust. It's in good condition. And there's no serious work to do to it. It needs a paint job, of course. And it's, I think it's the wrong colour. When they were out new, I couldn't afford one. I've just always liked them. Always liked them. After a busy auction, Derek now has a bit of time to reflect on the Volkswagen campers. The four, reviewed by Paul and Sarah, have now been joined by a mint condition fifth. That goes by the name of Poppy. Are you a fan of camping? Oh, yeah, yeah, I love camping. Oh, yeah, I think it's great, yeah. Well, that's the only thing we can afford when I was a kid, like, we couldn't go in hotels. Mum and Dad never had enough money to go into hotels. We'd have to go camping or caravan, caravan, of course. Me old dad, oh, boy. Did he love a caravanette? But he never liked these. And I'll be perfectly truthful, nor do I. The layout inside, the fact that you can't get in the back door always is a bit anti to me, you know. I'm more used to Bedford's. They're not my cup of tea, really, but they're so popular. Um, we sell them quite well. They're overpriced, you know. They're not really worth the sort of figure they achieve, but, but they achieve it, so there you are. People tend to buy them thinking they're going to get out every weekend, get here, get there, do all this, and go abroad and holidays everywhere and that sort of thing. They forget that they haven't got time. You know, it's, it's, the most, it's the most elementary mistake that people make. You know, they didn't have enough time last month to do whatever they wanted to do, so 
why buying one of these is going to give them a load of time next month to, to, do, to go out, and I'll never know. But they're great, they're good fun. Camper vans don't always have stoves, so it's Bubbles' turn to road test a possible replacement that's tickled his fancy. Heading for the auction, a Sirim tea set. We see lots of picnic hampers and things, but I think this could be probably pre-war. A little kettle in a self-contained burner, which I think runs on methylated spirits. Obviously, they filled the kettle with water before they left home, built it up, set fire to it and made a cup of tea. Let's have a look and see if we've got any meths in here. Mm, smells like it's, uh, it's ready to go. Right, we'll have to pop the kettle on, or else there could be a nasty explosion. I'm going to sit it on there and hopefully it will start to boil. The manufacturers claimed this stove would work as well outside as in, and you could broil a chop to perfection. Let's see what else we've got in here. I think this could well be a little milk container. Obviously, when they left home, uh, there weren't any cafes or anything on the roads, so they had to bring their own water and milk and tea with them. There we are, we're just about uh, ready to boil, I think. Tip that in there. Right, and then we'll put a little bit of, bit of water in. And then let's try it. Right, here we are. Proper Yorkshire tea, made at Matheson's. Not bad, that. Not bad. Matthewson's auction beautiful cars from every motoring era. That said, some of the more mature ones do require a patient owner. Wandery steering, brakes, or oh, lack of, <laughs> um, lack of synchromesh in the gears, and of course they're slow, you know, you, um, you're holding everybody up really. But today, Derek is travelling to Hartlepool to meet a couple who bucked the trend with their rare classic. It's a 1946 Austin 16 BS1, and I just think they're nice cars. They're a good, solid car, designed for bank managers and things like that. Bit of a quality car. Brian and Mary Sayers bought the Austin 10 years ago and decided to swap originality for usability. I've always modified cars. There's any roll bars front and rear. I've modified the rear suspension. It's got an extractor exhaust on it. It has ramp pipes and air filters. So virtually it's the same engine that's in the Austin Helio 100 four cylinder. And all in all, it goes rather well. People expect it to be stayed, and it isn't. It doesn't go like a stately car. It goes like stink. Been driving for a lot of years. And the only time I've been done for speeding is in the Austin 16. And there's the engine. Downdraft carburetor here for the different inlet manifold. Uh, electronic distributor. It has an alternator on, which it didn't have. It's got reversing sensors on, believe it or not. It's got most things a modern car has on. Including bucket seats and a racing harness. These seats are out of Renault Egan. Renault seats are very comfy. You've got a vacuum gauge, you've got a temperature gauge and a rev counter. Sunroof works. A windscreen opens up, wind it there. Third is air conditioning. There are spare parts and accessories too. That's the spare engine for the Austin 16. And round here is a spare gearbox for it. <laughs> That's full of leather. And it's hanging there so the mice can't get at it, I hope. I hope. Derek has arrived to collect the Austin. Nice, lovely spot you got oh, here. Oh, it's fantastic, yeah. But then realises there's an opportunity to discuss, at length, the inner workings of a moggy thousand. Is it a 1098? 1098 with a pipe, pipe of camion. Yeah, right. Uh, 1275 midget head on. I'll tell you what's the problem with my 
by a Morris Thousand van. It's got a 1275 midget engine yep. and back axle, standard gearbox. They've retained the original front flange on the uh, downpipe of the exhaust, which is like that bit smaller with a, a, oh, a 1275 just, manifold. Is it just a single manifold? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I can't get it Sometime later, the 16 is loaded up. Brian was thinking 9,000 for the unusually quick Austin. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll try it, we'll do what we can, but um, it's going to be a lot, lot less than that, Brian. Shall we see what feedback we get? That's fair enough. Yeah, let's see what we get. We'll do our best, won't we? Well, I'm going to show you we've never given one away yet. Yeah. Right, I want to make tracks. All the best. Good to yeah. see you, mate. Lovely, yeah. just a job. We'll do the best we can. Yeah, sure. we'll, uh, we'll have a chat on the phone, I'll give you some feedback. Thanks for the tea. Bye, love. Hurrah! It's auction day, and with five VW campers on offer, the backyard of the garage looks like a Woodstock car park. However, things are decidedly unchilled in the office. Good afternoon, Mathisons. It's who, sorry? What lot number was it? Yo! It's yeah. absolutely chaotic. It's really up to you, There's we, too we, much we, going on. There's too many people ringing, asking well, silly questions. Brilliant. Brilliant, OK. Nice and quiet today, Derek. Yes, yeah, relaxing, isn't it? Surely. When are we open? What time does the auction start? When's the next auction? Friday, what time? How have you got our number? Got it off the website? Yeah, it's just Keep looking morning. on the website, you'll see all the information on there. It's just like... Thank you. We'd just Bye. like to hasten to add, though, it's always... Who is it that always rings us silly questions? Men. Yeah. Women yeah. take the time to look, and if they can't find the answer, they'll ring us. Men just want their hand holding all the time. The VWs have brought out some happy campers. I think it's just a different way of life. It's a different type of holiday. You know, you're in the open air and in a day like this, there's nothing to beat it. There's something about them that just makes people look at them and, uh, and just makes people smile. But not all people. Some of these love buses need a mountain of work. It is an old one, this. Needs taken right back to the basics, really. To me, it would be more trouble than words worth. Not one for me today, no. Having five to go at, though, means bidders can take their pick. 1973 Volkswagen Camper. Start me on it. Where's it going to be? Where? 10. At the back. £10,000. Is there 11 anywhere? 10,005. 10, 5. Sarah and Paul's favourite, the T25, went for a good price. 9,000. But the yellow Devon Camper and the converted delivery van didn't reach reserve. So that's left the late entry, otherwise known as Poppy. Produced in 1970, it's the oldest of the batch. Almost certainly, without doubt, the best one we've ever had. Stunning bit of kit, super condition. Start me on it. Where are we going to be with that? Where? 10 again, 10, 5, 11, 5, 12, 5, 12, 5, 13, 13,000, 13, 13,000 only, 5, 13, 5, 750, 13, 750, submitting, 13, 750, 13, 750, 14, 14,000, submitting, 14,000 pound on the left, you're out this side, 14, provisional, lovely machine. A thousand below reserve. Anxious to find out if it's enough, highest bidders Deborah Wake and Martin Allchurch from Selby. Hello there. Hello. I think we bought a camper. Oh, let's oh, have puppy. a little look. Ah, oh, that'll be the red one then. Yes. Yeah, her Kirky. You most certainly have, yeah. Brilliant. Congratulations. Exciting. So what are your plans with Poppy anyway? Have you got a holiday booked with her? Well, we'll have to see whether or not she needs a bit of um, yeah, TLC, TLC first. first. We'll yep. have a few trips out, uh, take her over to the coast. Fantastic! Absolutely lovely. She's gorgeous, isn't she? She's beautiful. I've never had a daughter, I've only had boys, so this is my little girl. <laughs> what do you think? Lovely. We didn't get in last time when we came to the No, the uh, 
There's all these little. I, I think this must slide out so you could. Uh, yeah, it'll stow it somewhere. Bit, so. It'll stow somewhere. Uh, uh, what kind of sandwich? How big is it? Ooh, there's a letter. Oh, we got a letter. Who is this from? I don't know. I think it's a... It must have left something in. Hello to the new owners of Poppy. Oh, that's really sweet. Let's see look. Yeah, you can read it. Oh, well, I think I'm going to cry. Hello, new owners of Poppy. The family that you bought this from loved and cared for this camper van. It was great for camping and made most of our memories. We hope you have great times in this camper van, chugging away along the road, yours sincerely. Oh, isn't that sweet? The rare 1946 Austin 16, with its 21st century additions, is safely at the garage. But Derek's struggling with the concept. A lot of upgrades which is a bit unusual. You know, during this guy's ownership, he's modified it to actually use very well. Nice old car, really. Um, not, not the best body, not the best paintwork. Indicators, obviously, safety these days. No one's looking for semaphores anymore. I'm not over sure that too many old cars really require a fog lamp. Uh, we're not out too much in foggy weather with these sort of things, really. Uh, I can't stand the Ford Transit mirrors. I, I think that is... Um, that is really a no-no. I mean, that is just a killer for the car, really. Um, just that alone, just this, this mod alone, and the seats will virtually kill the sale. Most people really want originality when it comes to selling. They might then go through and do all this for their own benefit, but they're a weird bunch, and we're all a weird bunch. When you buy the vehicle, you want it basic, really, somehow. It's got to go to a certain guy that really wants to use it. He don't care about the fact that he ain't got the right seats and he ain't got this and that and all that. He wants to use it. So um, if he's out there, we'll have him. But um, if he's not, we're going to struggle. Time will tell when it goes under the hammer. Do you remember the uh, French cartoon print? Oh, that's right. Derek is busying himself with a new delivery of memorabilia. Yeah, oh, that's it? all scratch built. Is it really? Isn't it lovely? That's a detail in that, isn't yeah. it? What he should be doing is a rare and precious thing in Derek world, having a day off. Yeah, that's fantastic, that, isn't it? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, they both are. He's supposed to be taking us out, me, Nan and my sister, which obviously ain't going to happen for a while. OK, I'll, I'll ask the lads to get it out. Give, give them a couple of hours and I'll, uh, I'll ask them to get it out. No. Even Kate rang in this morning and said, Grandad, are we going out today? Yes. Right, well, I think you and Nan should come here because if, if you go to the garage, then we all know what happens. That was Kate, so even she's worked it out. She's seven, isn't she? Only an hour and a half late. They're on the way to the coast and taking in the sights. See that there, Charlie? Yeah. There used to be a car showroom, yeah. and that shed at the side there, look, that bit on the side, show. yeah, was full of motorbikes. You want to go home, you see? Straight in, straight out. Derek's spotted a car showroom. I mean, he's got some lovely little showroom, a lovely setup he's got there, but um, the price of them motorbikes has gone up. I mean, heck, he's dreaming. The unscheduled stopovers continue. This time, a quick MG valuation, possibly for the auction. He can't bring himself to have a day off. He's just horrendous. Yeah, oh, where's the old MG? Yeah. Ah, oh, she's lovely. Is that a full body off rebuild? I like it, the fact it ain't black. I mean, I like black, but it makes a nice change from black, doesn't it? Yeah, it'd do well, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think Brand new cross blast tires all the way around, yeah. all new brake shoes, cylinders, steering. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure it'll hit 10, but I think it'll do 9. It's approaching midday and everyone's hungry. Time to sample one of Haunts's famous tourist attractions. What's your key? Enjoy your meal. 
This is my holiday, and about a day off, this is it. This is my annual. You can keep all your Costa Brava, we'd rather come here, wouldn't we? You wouldn't like it in Spain. Full of blooming flies and mosquitoes and things biting you. And too blooming hot. Eh? Don't you think, Charlie? Canada. You think it's cold here today, why don't you get over there? Go on, here. Bears running about all over the place. Go on, here. Yeah. Well, that's good, true. If we was in Canada now, tonight there'd be bears around them bins out there, seeing what they can feed. Oh, man. Ultimately, family will always win out over cars, but ice cream comes a strong third. Well, what a shame. If it was nice and warm, we could be sat down there, couldn't we? Come on. Is that a flyer? I think it's a fly, isn't it? In Thornton Ladale, it's the day of reckoning for the Austin 16. With its uprated engine, suspension, and safety features, it's not one for the purists, but it will probably get you home. Amongst the piles of memorabilia, a man familiar with this make of car. I bought this to fit on an Austin 16. I think I paid £155 for it. Yeah, big money, but. If it does the job, I'm happy. Nice old dinky milk float. They used to be electric because nobody wanted to wake people up on a morning. These are side lamps for an old vintage car. I'll have to be discreet with the um, with the bedding, won't I? Anything I like, other people might like. Austin 16, super bit of kit. Where are we going to be? Where? Five, five, 255, 756, 6,000 pounds, 6,250, 65, 6,500, 6,500, 66, 6,006, 67, 68, 6,800, 6,008, 6,008 and going then, 6,800. Are you all done? 6,800. Selling, 6,800. Last time looking around, 6,008. 6,008. A healthy £1,800 over reserve. The highest bidder, Paul Squire, who promptly dispatched it to his home in Hertfordshire. I've had classic cars forever, always Triumphs. Uh, it was time to move on to something a bit older, uh, vintage. So I was guided towards an Austin 16. So the main reason for getting the Austin was I promised my daughter I would take her to her prom uh, in that kind of car. And when I showed her the car, she fell in love with it. Uh, she's already named the car. It's now called Elsie. It's really pretty, it makes a lovely noise, and I love the hooter. It's, you don't get it on modern day cars. Purdy's prom is a few months away, but today there's going to be a trial run. Purdy, are you going in the front? With the help from her friends, Ava and Megan. Megan, if you come this side. It's going to sound really daft, but I've always wanted a car with suicide doors. Uh, don't get your dress caught while you get in there. Mind yourself. I love the lines. Um, I love the whole old school feel of it. So what do you think, girls? The Austin may have more mods than most, but it's still very much a 1940s car just to have no driver aids that you would find on a modern car, even as basic as hydraulic brakes. It strums all round. There's no power steering, so you stand no chance of turning that steering wheel while you're stationed. You have to go back to old school driving of move and then begin to turn the wheel. You'd have muscles like Popeye by the end of the day, that's for sure. It's, it's a challenge. It, it, you're actually involved in driving again, rather than so far removed <laughs> compared to the modern stuff. I quite fancy doing a little bit of wedding work with it to uh, actually get it used, uh, allow people to enjoy uh, an almost 75-year-old car. In County Durham, Ray Lynn's renovation of the visually challenged Reliance Scimitar is underway. 
concentrate on one area of the car at a time. Done all the underneath and getting it all sprayed up nice and chassis black, that's finished. Uh, all the brakes done, brake pipes, and I've already detailed the engine bay and painted the inner wings, that's the colour with red I'm doing it, it's like a dark maroon red. The next I'm going to concentrate on the interior and then the last thing I'll do is the bodywork. Ray paid £1,200 for the pleasure of doing this car up. When it's finished, he plans to take it back to Matthewson's to be auctioned. A lot of people are snobs with cars, but I, I, li I like the every man's car. I mean, if this was an A-type Jag, you'd spend £60,000, £70,000 on it. Where this, I'm only going to be spending five, six hundred pounds on it. I'm not going to make a fortune on it, but I'll, I'll double me money when I sell it. I'll double me money. In other news, after Bubbles completed a tricky road test... Right, we'll have to pop the kettle on, or else there could be a nasty explosion. The Serum tea-making kit caught Derek's eye at the auction. Oh, that's a nice one, Jim. What's amazing about that? How old's that? Late 20s. Mmm, nice. That's a lovely thing, that. And it sold for a good price. 120, you'll kick yourself on the way home. 120 on my right. It's the way and going. 120, are you done? 120. Lovely bit of kit. Harewood House in Leeds. The venue for the country's largest annual Volkswagen festival. Rare original models mixing it up with modified monsters, tuned to within an inch of their lives. It's a baptism of fire for Poppy and her new owners, Deborah and Martin. First time we've ever been to a, a festival of any sort, really. Come along to have a nice day and listen to some music, but it's been absolutely throwing it down all day. My desire is to get her down to Saint Tropez, but I think we might need a bit of, a bit, of bit, a, bit of time to get all the way down there. It's what about 800 miles? A thousand, nothing. A thousand, yeah. And probably wisely, Deborah has signed up for a motor vehicle maintenance course. I work in IT, so you don't really do anything useful with that, but I, I like making things. I do a lot of craft and upholstery, and I can do things like that, and I thought, well, I can give it a go, learn how to look after the engine as well. Ray, Plastic glasses, yeah, you know, needs must. Many more, chin-chin. Yes. <laughs>